to the St. Mary's Thanksgiving Classic. We had our tournament opener at 5 p.m. today. Now it is time for your St. Mary's Rattlers. We're going through the starting lineup for Central Missouri. Now we will turn to meet your starters for St. Mary's University. Ryan Thomas and number 45, Joe Monroe. The Rattlers are facing Central Missouri tonight. So far undefeated on the season, 5-0 record right now. St. Mary's might have a little problem tonight. Three players down due to injury. So we will see uh, what happens tonight. So far, your St. Mary's is 4-1 on the season. And welcome once again here to the beautiful Bill Gritty here Arena as we have the opening tip between Central Missouri and your St. Mary's Rattlers. As Robin said, two good teams coming into tonight's ball game. One loss and nine wins between them. So it should be a dandy as we open up the St. Mary's Thanksgiving Classic here on what is now known, I guess, as Black Friday. Came to learn yesterday was known as Gray Thursday. Something new uh, they tried out this year. Rattlers looking to try, to try some new things for this game as we are three players down due to injury. Joe Monroe getting a start tonight, usually off the bench. So we'll see what the Rattlers can work with tonight. Okay, you're starting five again for St. Mary's. You got Christian Bauer at the, at the point, joined by Marvin Witt, J.J. Bolton, Ryan Thomas, and Joe Monroe. St. Mary's opens with a miss to start the game. Robin Johnson, Chad Peters bring you the call here as Marvin Witt gets the steal and the bucket. Easy transition points there for St. Mary's. And what you saw is what you get right there with Marvin Witt. He's pint size at about five foot nine, but boy is he fast, quick hands. Might be the best defender St. Mary's has. And you saw right there his ability to, to swipe away the basket ball. So far, one of my favorites to watch this season is Marvin Witt. I mean, such a little package pack that punch, packs a great punch. Uh, always fun to watch him play. It's really growing on me this season. That was Kyle Wolf with the miss from three-point distance for Central Missouri. Joe Monroe goes up and gets stuffed by Wolf. 
But St. Mary's retains the basketball. And Christian Bauer will be the one bringing it in. St. Mary's unbeaten at home so far this season. As they are 3-0 in the comfy confines of Bill Grehe Arena. Three seconds on St. Mary's, so possession goes to Central Missouri. Of course, a lot, a lot going on with St. Mary's basketball this year. Not only uh, do we have the current guys out there in action, but also the former great Kevin Kotzer playing in the NBA D-League this year. His first year in the D-League, uh, having a tremendous effort, really a double-double guy every night there for them, just like he was for us. Another miss three, four. Central Missouri this time. Dalen Robinson no good. So Central Missouri two minutes in still looking for their first points. I think for a team that's so far undefeated on the season, Rawls are really going to have to step up their defenses. Joe takes one at the elbow there. Just out, just misses. Rebound by Preston Bruins there. Yeah, you don't see Monroe with too many jumpers. Had a funny... Uh, uh, conversation with one of the coaching uh, coaching members a couple games ago. Joe had a monster dunk, was feeling really good, took a, a long jumper, airballed it. Confidence a little too high, perhaps, but he brings a lot of uh, great play inside for St. Mary's. St. Mary's does have the turnover, and the uh, Dalen Robinson, they're trying to pass it back. It goes off of J.J. Bolton's knee and out of bounds, so the Mules do retain possession following the St. Mary's turnover. And again, uh, from uh, the Rattler family, all of us here at the Rattler Network, Joe Rodriguez, Brian Magloyan. First time I've ever had to say that name, I can spell it uh, like no, nobody's business. But And David Tovar, all of us here, and a turnover there, a violation by the Mules. But all of us here at Rattler Network, Robin Johnson and myself, do wish you all, I uh, hope you have a happy Thanksgiving and a, a good Thanksgiving weekend here so everyone hopefully gets the weekend off. And Looks like uh, a lot of Rattler fans have the weekends off. Uh, Came down here to Bill Grehe Arena. Would also like to thank Airmark tonight and providing uh, students with a Thanksgiving turkey wrap here on campus for students who could not travel home. Much like our broadcasters, Joe and Brian, who I'm sure am, who are listening uh, to tonight's broadcast. And Marvin Witt comes off the screen there for an easy jumper. So Marvin Witt has all of St. Mary's four points here early. Three minutes in, not a high-scoring game by any means. This is kind of the style of play St. Mary's likes to play with. Uh, you'll see plenty of games with the Rattlers where they're scoring in the 50s and 60s. You might think that's an off night. Not really, kind of by design for the Rattlers. Low-scoring, defensive, rebounding type team. And we'll get into the rebounds a little bit more uh, later on in this broadcast, but that's their style of basketball. Looked like that was going to be a kickball call, but called a foul on Ryan Thomas there. Yeah, Thomas comes in and body checks. I believe Robinson on that one for the foul. And Wolf with the easy bucket inside for Central Missouri's first points of the game, three and a half minutes in almost. Christian Bauer brings it up the court. Bauer, one of two St. Mary's seniors, him and Fred Wilson, who we might see off the bench this evening, uh, St. Mary's captains this season. Very uh, A very new-look squad. Ryan Thomas with the post-up move, turnaround jumper, no good. Try to fight for the rebound. Christian is coming off a great game, had nine assists in the Rattlers' last home game. And a foul he's called there. Justin Alexander and Efi AK. Getting ready to check in here for the Rattlers. Yeah, with that foul, the second on Thomas, you'll see some uh, movement in the St. Mary's lineup now as a result. St. Mary's with three early fouls tonight. Wolf can't connect on the first one. So it is Thomas and Joe Monroe going out, Alexander and AK coming in. You know, Chad, I predict we might see this tonight, a lot of switching of posts as we are down Isaiah Matthews. I think maybe Coach Zelzanak will, will keep try to keep his post fresh as they are down a man as uh, Central Missouri makes that free throw. Yeah, Wolf connects to bring the Mules within one. Yeah. 
And it is a rotation of big men, as you say, Robin. The last year, you knew who the big guy was. It was one Kevin Kotzer. Just now, Alexander with a brilliant post move there. And that's really what you get with Alexander, just a, a nice repertoire of offensive moves. Also, those long arms has become a, a much better defensive player after transferring in last year as a sophomore. So he still has two years of eligibility. But it is a new-look squad, a ton of new players in all, and especially there in the post area. Wolf for three, good. Wolf is quickly becoming a main component to the Mules here. Able to post up and shoot outside. But just to wrap up that thought, Kotzer last year, you know, a 20 and 10 type of guy every night. This year the Rattlers don't have that. They're trying to get the 20 and 10 from maybe two or three different guys. You're seeing two of those players right now on the court, uh, Alexander and AK, who bring very many different things. And Alexander, great, great uh, energy and effort there on the sideline. Went down to the floor, a seven-footer going down, but not able to retain possession. It will be the Mules' ball. And we have our first media timeout of the game. The Rattler fans... If you haven't yet, it's time to get in the game and check out the all-new RattlerGear.com, St. Mary's Athletics' one-stop shop online for everything gold and blue. Buy now for a free gift of a St. Mary's Rattlers mug with a purchase of $50. Also check out a customized replica basketball jersey, now 10% off. And we mentioned Black Friday earlier. Black Friday through Cyber Monday. Be sure to check out the website now as we have a special sale going on there. Free shipping for all $25 purchases made now through Monday on, again, RattlerGear.com. And uh, safe to say, RattlerGear.com, a hit among our staff. They have all kind of nice uh, new logoed items, polos, hats, T-shirts, mugs, you name it. Personal favorite of mine, those hoodies with the basketball logo, the, the cutout of the basketball silhouette, really, really nice. And, and broadcaster uh, Brian was in our office the other day with one of those, quite jealous that he made that purchase. Yes. Made a few purchases myself, can't wait until after this game so I can take uh, advantage of that free shipping. Uh, also, Rattler fans, members of Rattler Nation, get an extra perk. You get 5% off RattlerGear.com, so just another incentive there to join Rattler Nation as the timeout concludes. And we see some Rowdy Rattlers trickling in here. St. Mary so far tonight, 3 of 7 from the floor. Central Missouri, 2 of 5. The Mules do own the lone three-pointer made so far. Robinson dribbles, kicks it back out to Epps. Epps takes another three from three from beyond, top of the key, rather. No good. AK hauls in the rebound. You saw the athleticism there of AK. Rebounding is part of his game. He had a game with ten rebounds earlier this season. Able to get involved even when he's not scoring. Bauer brings it up the court. Witt wants something in the corner. AK kicks it out to him. He's going to shoot. From the wing, good. Wow. Marvin Witt. A little hesitation there. You weren't sure if he was gonna gonna pop it, but he sure did. And uh, now he has seven points in just a few minutes of the game. And Preston Bruins answers in style for Central Missouri. So just like that, we we're all even back up at nine apiece. Bolton trying to get it inside to Alexander, but Alexander's hacked. I believe by number thirty, Sean O'Brien. And Brian has tweeted at us, of course he is watching. So he will be uh, providing the critique Monday morning probably for yes. us. On <laughs> may not be quite as polished as Brian and Joe, but or David. But uh, we're Rattler fans nonetheless. Be interesting to see how many minutes Marvin gets tonight. He's the only Marvin. And if you haven't seen Joe Rodriguez's column on RattlerAthletics.com, he was starving for some Marvin. Alexander with a hook shot. Bolton gets the offensive rebound. And back inside oh, to AK. Sharp pass there. Calling a charge on Efi. But Joe was starving for some Marvin tonight. It's only one Marvin. Marvin Benny is still sidelined by that injury suffered in the last home game. Hope to have him back here soon. But Marvin Ben, uh, Marvin Witt, doing his part to pick up for both the Marvins with seven early points, all but two of the Rattlers' early scoring production. That's number one in the game now. Brian Magjosh with the basket. Central Missouri's first lead of the game. Bauer sets up St. Mary's offense and gets it back to Witt along the wing. You can see just the energy in, in Witt just trying to find the open man, able to move the ball quickly. 
Christian goes up and good. Drills right in for a floater. Game tied again. 11-11 as Christian gets on the board. And Bauer with a nice one, uh, left-handed floater there. And Bauer, Bauer will get you some sneaky scoring. You know, you think of him and, the, and more of the assist numbers. I believe he had a nine assist game earlier this year, almost a double-double with 10 points in that game. He gets you some sneaky baskets, also able to get back out there and hit from three-point distance. Not really a, a big score, but able to, to make some sneaky baskets, and you saw that one right there. You know, I've talked about this with David. It, it, you know, there are times when Christian does remind me a little bit of Tony Parker, just the way uh, he gets those floaters and teardrops in. and The teardrop uh, move for sure. It seems like he's kind of patterned. He, he's stolen that move, so yes. to speak. Uh, I, I like the way Christian moves. He, he's very smooth and definitely sneak, can, can sneak up on you. He, he's had a few games where he scored almost 20 points, so he, he can definitely find the hole when he wants to. So Joe Monroe checking back in the game for St. Mary's for Ife AK. And we have a Central Missouri foul. I believe on number 24, Dylan Deck. Fourth team foul on Central Missouri. Four team fouls apiece going both ways tonight. And that is Deck's second. Rattler showing good patience so far on offense tonight. I like the way they're working the ball inside, letting the post go to work. Also kicking it out with Sal, although that pass not so good. Took Alexander back out to the corner, and then Alexander turns it over. Rattlers are having some trouble with uh, looks like Central Missouri is just flying the ball and going into a double team trap. Rattlers have uh, been turning it over a little bit. Hopefully they will work their way out of those traps here. Alexander picking up his first foul of the ninth, fifth foul on St. Mary's. We'll have two substitutions for the Rattlers. Bryce Smith taking over the point position for Christian Bauer. And then Fred Wilson comes in for J.J. Bolton. I think Christian is, we're gonna see uh, another player getting a lot of minutes tonight. We were talking about this the other night about Bryce Smith coming in. Really worked on his game quite a bit. He, he's uh, improved so much in his three years of the team. Although right there, it's a brilliant basket by the Mules. Ryan Donald working his way for the end one opportunity. Foul on Joe Monroe, so his second. So the Rattlers starting to pick up a little bit of foul trouble there inside. Definitely, but not what they want to see uh, with a, a low bench count tonight. Fred Wilson checks in. Marvin Witt with the rebound. And yeah, Witt with that rebound. Emphasizes the point we touched on earlier. The Rattlers really a good rebounding team across the board at all positions. Witt and J.J. Bolton, both very strong rebounders for their position. Monroe attacks the basket, no good, but Alexander there to clean it up and put it in. Ties the ball game once more. And we'll have a, another substitution here. The next stoppage is Ifeake is kind of laying out there at midcourt ready to come in, presumably for Monroe, who has two fouls. I think the Rattlers are going to have to work for every basket tonight, as we've seen, especially down low, getting a lot of pressure from defense. It's a missed three, close to Marvin Witt for yep. a rebound. Yeah, Witt coming up with another one there, doing a good job fighting and taking it away. Kicks it over to Bryce Smith, finds Fred Wilson in the corner for three. Good! So Fred Wilson comes off the bench and into your living rooms with that three-pointer. Rattlers now up by three. Great ball movement there by Bryce. And sorry, folks, we just realized that we have not changed the score here. It is St. Mary's 16, visitor 13. Bryce Smith working some good defense out there. And I don't think that one even hit rim, but it didn't matter. Is Alexander able to bring in the rebound? Bryce Smith, excellent defense out there along the perimeter. The Rattlers will go back to work offensively. Fred Wilson down to Joe Monroe, but oh, he travels. Another turnover for the Rattlers. And we will have another media timeout. The Rattler fans will be right back. We'll take this break with them. St. Mary's up 16-13 here early. And the St. Mary's Thanksgiving Classic live on the Rattler Network. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We got the spirit. 
We're hot. We can't be stopped. We're going to beat them and bust them. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. And we welcome you back, Rattler fans. Efi AK checks into the game. Oh, a nice block by Efi there. Again, showing that athleticism. Not the tallest of guys, but great vertical. Able to play above the rim as he gets that block there. And a steal by Marvin Witt. So far having an amazing game, seven points. So far including a three-pointer. Bryce Smith bringing it up. Aggressive defense so far from the Mules as the Rattlers turn it away there from that defense. But they are keeping strong in this game. Maintaining a three-point lead right now. Dalen Robinson for the Mules. Shot there by the Mules. Jumper by Fred Wilson, and that is good. Fred being an immediate spark off the bench. Five points so far. Rather is now up 18 to 13 over the Mules. Ooh, and a rough rebound there. Ryan, o Ryan Donald trips over. Ife has a hard fall, but Ife gets called for the foul there. If you're following live on live stats online, one minor hiccup to make you aware of for St. Mary's statistics, Fred Wilson, his stats will be showing up as Jared Anthony for the time being. So just uh, FYI, that will be cleaned up. Ryan Donald at the line now. It's like a little ref conference. And uh, team huddle, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what the hold up here is on the free throw. Central Missouri, already uh, three free throw attempts in the game. St. Mary's none so far. They are one for three, so struggling a bit in the early goings. Make it one for four. Fred Wilson brings in the rebound on that miss. I think a game like tonight, uh, free throws, things like free throws and turnovers are really going to come back to haunt teams. Uh, as I predict, a pretty close game here between the Rattlers and the Mules. Leading score for St. Mary's still wit with seven. Justin Alexander off the bench with four. Fred Wilson with three. It's Bryce Smith shooting up the jumper there. Out of bounds off of either Witt or AK's hands and that will be back into the Mules possession. St. Mary's with that five point lead, their largest of the game. Marvin, the only player on the floor who started the game who has not had some time on the bench. 
think uh, the Rattlers will be using him quite a, as Wolf takes another jumper there. Marvin with the rebound. And again, like we talked about earlier, Bryce Smith getting some valuable minutes here in this game. Marvin Witt through three hit the front iron. Rattlers not able to get the rebound there. Good effort by the Mules. It was Jordan Epps fighting for that and getting it into the arms of Preston Bruins. Your score is St. Mary's 18, Central Missouri 13. Nice movement down low for Ryan Donald. Second personal on Ify AK. Rattler Post need to watch their fouls here. They cannot afford to get in foul trouble. And they're already there. Three Rattler uh, big men with two fouls apiece. Ryan Thomas, who sat on the bench early. Joe Monroe is on the bench now. And then Ify AK coming in for Monroe picks up his second. He's talking with the ref now a little bit. So Rattler's in early foul trouble in this one. Seems to be a, a common theme so far this season for the Rattlers running into some foul trouble early on. As Preston Bruins grabs the rebound there. Layup by Wolf, put back. Goodbye, Donald. He will get the and one there. Donald so far been effective. This is his third time at the line this quarter, or this half, excuse me. As Central Missouri is now within two, 18 to 16, St. Mary's. Christian Bauer back in the game, as well as J.J. Bolton in for A.K. and Bryce. Free throw is good. Central Missouri sticking with their zone defense. The 2 3 looks like they're going to continue to trap the Rattlers and try to get that pressure up. Christian with a long three. And a foul called on Josh Gillum. The John Gillum, his first foul. And that will take us to another media timeout. Rattlers hanging on 18-17 here. We'll be right back. You're watching Rattler Basketball on the Rather Network. Looking for these? You drive buzzed, it could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. And we welcome you back. 7.41 left in the first half. St. Mary's up 18-17 to 17 here on this uh, day after Thanksgiving, on the opening day of the St. Mary's Thanksgiving Classic. Earlier today was Emporia State defeating Southeastern Oklahoma State pretty handedly. J.J. Bolton attacks the rim. No good. R rises up, gets his own rebound, and puts it in. Nice hustle by J.J. Bolton. I think that's the practice. Uh, head coach Jim Zelzenak has a instilled in his players so far this season. 
And a foul called by J.J. on the three-pointer. And you see Coach Z's reaction on that one. Not a good foul by J.J. Kind of a rush shot from beyond the perimeter from Preston Bruins. And he's bailed out for three shots now. So Central Missouri already one uh, for four from the line. One for five. Not the best of displays earlier. And Robin, you mentioned earlier, you have a feeling these points are going to come back to haunt them. And hopefully for us, I mean, um, that Central Missouri isn't able to connect as they do on that one. Because once they start, uh, if they would have had a better free throw percentage, they would have been leading in this game. So the Rattlers really need to watch those fouls as that could also come back to hurt us. As the Mules have been the only team so far to get at the line. And Bruins sinks that one too. And so Bruins goes two for three on that trip. Brings the Mules back within one. Been a tight first half here. St. Mary's biggest lead of the game was five. And the Mules led briefly early as well. Witt so drives in for the foul. He would go to the line for two free shots. Yeah, his aggression offensively will be rewarded. So St. Mary's goes to the line for the first time tonight. With this season averaging 9.6 points a game for St. Mary's. Shooting a hair under 64% from the line. Was 7 of 11. He's now 8 of 12 after getting that one. And 9 of 13 now as he brings his half total to 9 so far this season. And now we have Jared Anthony just checked in. Yeah, the, uh, the last of the uh, remaining big men on St. Mary's bench. Really. Jared Anthony coming in for Justin Alexander. Another rush shot by Central Missouri. Marvin Witt with his third rebound already. Jared Anthony, an interesting story that we might get to later this broadcast. Fred Wilson, oh, oh what a anyway, great man. basket there. Attacks the basket, and you see the emotion that he wears on his sleeve. Wilson with some nice uh, energy and spark coming off the bench for the Rattlers tonight. Now up to seven points. You know, the St. Mary's team made that run to the regional tournament last year was uh, one late surge away. And he had the feeling one more Moses Sindufu three-pointer away from winning the region and going to the Elite Eight. But it was a Sweet 16 run for the Rattlers, their first ever as an NCAA team. And so much of the team is different this year. Another three-point shot, this time good. Dalen Robinson connecting, brings the Mules back within three. But Fred Wilson is one of the guys that was on that team, a key contributor, as was Bauer, the starting point guard a year ago. And other than Joe Monroe and Isaiah Matthews and Justin Alexander, everything else, it seems, is different. J.J. Bolton, one of those differences, paying off for the Rattlers right there. Another three-point shot as it's starting to fall for both teams from beyond the arc. Robinson has an easy layup there. I don't think Coach Z is very happy with that one because that was an easy bucket. So far, our points have been well distributed among the Rattlers, as we have seen all season. Not really a one-man scoring team. Nice distribution among the bench and the starting lineup. B foul on Sean O'Brien. Eighth team foul as Jared Anthony will go to the line for the one and one shot. And on this Thanksgiving weekend, it is uh, it is fitting that one of our referees for tonight's ball game is George Washington. I kid you not, George E. Washington. Not sure if he was the one making that call there or not. Free throw, no good. Rattlers up four with 5.48 remaining in the first half. JJ called for over the back there on the rebound. He now has two fouls. Wolf will now have his one and one shot, or I believe it is, and they are now in the two shot bonus. It's 
it just now, Alexander back in for Jared Anthony. And Bryce Smith in for J.J. Bolton after he picks up his second foul. And Coach Z having to ma uh, massage his roster pretty carefully here. I believe that's four players now with... Uh, and it is EVAK with three fouls and then Ryan Thomas, Joe Monroe, and Justin Bolton, or J.J. Bolton rather, with two as well. Fred Wilson misses there. Rebound is Dalen Robinson. He brings it up the court quickly, ready to put a move on Witt, but draws it back. We've seen both teams, uh, neither team rather, shy from shooting the three-point basket, but it's there. Marvin Witt with another steal as he pokes it away from Robinson. Attacks the rim, no good. Hoping to draw a foul there, but unable to get one. But I like the idea from Witt and the, the overall attack mode that he brings to the St. Mary's lineup. It's really going to be a great asset. It has been so far this season. I think we're going to see it a lot of out of him in the next two seasons. And we saw during the Las Vegas Classic that opened up the season, Marvin Witt had a post-game quote to our uh, Kayleen Zelzenak. Witt again with a shot, no good. Wolf with the rebound for Central Missouri. He had a quote, had a good tournament out there, and he told Kayleen, you know, he's just adjusting to kind of coming off the bench. He's never really done that before. And he's done a good job of it. Of course, he's back in the starting lineup tonight. Quite a scramble down at the basket for the rebound. And the Rattlers luck out there as Epps' shot rattled out. Thought that was going in. Alexander able to get the rebound and a foul now. On number 15, his first. The first of the night for Jordan Epps. Sends Justin Alexander to the free throw line. Ryan Donald pulls in the miss. Approaching the final four minutes of the half. Rattler's still up by two in what's been an exciting game. And for all the talk about the hand check fouls and, and everything we've seen in college basketball lately with the new rules, not really a lot of fouls being called in that sense. A lot more of the, the uh, penalties being forced down low. Wolf with a three. Oh, what a great rebound by Robinson in the putback. Rather, T.J. White. For the putback basket to tie it up with 3.45 left. Almost stripped away there, but Fred comes up with it. Goes in for the bucket. Yeah, really a dangerous attempt by T.J. White because it's a feast or famine type of move, and it was famine in the end for him. Bauer with the pulls in the miss as the Rattlers he move up court fast, and Bauer attacks. Doesn't Tries to get the foul. He's uh, beside himself, but he didn't get the call. Oh, that might. Oh, and a charge is called on Jordan Epps there. Rowler's playing great defense, able to stand their ground. And, and several things going on here. Fred Wilson, just a great move drawing that charge. Christian Bauer had a little bit of a word for the referee there as he headed the bench. He needs to probably watch that. I don't think the referee liked that. And it is a media timeout here. 313 left. And we'll take a quick break with it. Rattler's up two. You're watching Rattler Basketball here on the Rattler Network. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around ten thousand dollars. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving.
Okay. They're back, Fred Wilson. Inbounds the pass to Christian Bauer, who'll bring it up. Final three minutes of the first half. Been a, a good half, really. Not uh, too many miscues for either team. Alexander tries to go to work down low, but called for the travel. Nice post-up move by Alexander. He, again, you're really seeing a, a nice repertoire from his game tonight, but not rewarded for the move there. They say that he traveled. So another turnover for the Rattlers. If there's been a bugaboo, it's been that for St. Mary's tonight. Rattlers with seven turnovers already. Leading score for Central Missouri so far. Number 33, Kyle Wolf. We saw him hit that three-pointer earlier. Good defense by Bauer. And a foul called on Justin Alexander. You're kind of watching Fred Wilson guard Wolf. You can see the trouble there as uh, Wolf is trying to post up. And so that can be a, a difficult guard or a difficult man to guard. Yeah, St. Mary's bench did not like that call. It is Ryan Donald now at the line. Shooting two. First one rims out. I believe this is his fourth trip to the line so far. Meaning four separate occasions he has been at the line. And he sinks that second one. So Donald moves to four of six tonight at the strike. Fred looked like he was going to take that one, but pulls up. You saw him grimace almost when he decided to pull up on that one. I think he wanted it. And a kickball. So Rattlers will regain possession here with 19 seconds on the shot clock. Five on the court for St. Mary's. Bauer, Witt, Wilson, Alexander, and Bryce Smith. So a smaller lineup, both point guards on the floor right now. And Bauer attacks and draws the foul. So Bauer will be going to the line with 2.06 left in the half. And we see a little bit more of that massaging of the roster being done by Coach Z. Jared Anthony about to check in for the Rattlers. Heavy foul trouble inside tonight. And they just got to hope they can get through the final two minutes without drawing any more fouls from their big men. Bauer cannot connect on his first shot. Bauer this season averaging, uh, averaging 7.4 points a game. It's only a second miss from the free throw line all season. He's shooting 80%. And he gets that one. Rattlers now leading by two. Tight game. Neal's trying to set up their offense. We've seen them with that quick trigger from three-point distance. Dalen Robinson trying to find something. Oh, what a beautiful dish inside to TJ White, who gets it to roll in. For a second, it looked like that might roll out, and that would have been a shame for, for White because that was a beautiful move and a beautiful pass setting it up. Final minute and a half here. Now a tie game again. Rattlers want to go into this half with momentum. Hopefully they can get it going here. Fred Wilson with a spin move, but stripped. And the Mules with a fast break. Oh! And the foul is called. And TJ White with a beautiful quasi alley-oop attempt there. Kind of more of a lay-in, but a beautiful fast break offense there from Central Missouri for the and one opportunity. And it might be uh, Central Missouri going in uh, to the half with momentum. Wilson might have gotten a little greedy on that offensive move on the other end. Tried for the spin. We've seen it work for him already tonight. But it didn't pay off there. So the Rattlers all of a sudden find themselves down three. Central Missouri. And our coach Kim Anderson with a an impressive surge here late in the half. Bauer trying to get the Rattlers settled down. You know, this last year, you see the difference between this year and last year. This is where you just kick it inside to Kevin Kotzer for an easy two. Rattlers having to find their offense 
in different ways this season. Down to eight seconds on the shot clock. Bauer kicks it back to Wilson, who drives a nice sidestep move, but can't connect. Ryan Donald gets the rebound. 41 seconds left in the half. We'll see if Central Missouri goes for two for one. They will not. They're going to pull it back. Differential of about six and a half seconds between game clock and shot clock, so St. Mary's could have an opportunity still for the final shot. Ryan Madjosh with the ball there. That is number one for Central Missouri. Central Missouri struggling to find much going. Three on the shot clock. And it is number 11 spinning shot, and it rattles out. Marvin Witt with five seconds on the clock, fouled near midcourt. So Witt brings in the rebound, his fourth of the night, and he is fouled, sending the Rattlers to the stripe with 3.7 ticks left here. Kind of ran into his defender there, kind of an unfortunate place for the defender to be, but a foul is called. And Marvin will go for hitting double digits in this half if he is able to knock these free throws down. He makes the first and really an unfortunate foul from the standpoint of Central Missouri. Only you know under four seconds left. Rattler's still the ball in the backcourt. Not sure how much offense, uh, how great of a look they could have established there. Instead, it's two quick points, easy points for Witt. And now Central Missouri with the final shot. Witt pressing. Dalen Robinson. So Robinson with the off bounds three from about the snake there off the side of the rim. Looked like from our vantage point that had a real good shot. But instead, it's Central Missouri up by one going into the half. We'll take a quick break with them and bring back. We'll be back shortly with all of your halftime stats. Again, St. Mary's trailing by one here on this Friday evening on the first day of the St. Mary's Classic. You're watching Rattler Basketball live on the Rattler Network. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov.
And we welcome you back, Rattler fans, out of the half. On the floor for the Rattlers is your original starting five with Christian Bauer, Marvin Witt, Ryan Thomas, Joe Monroe, and J.J. Bolton. It'll be Rattlers ball at the half. Rattlers went into halftime trailing by one. They try to step it up this half. Been an aggressive game so far. Neither team really able to establish dominance over the other. As JJ passes it inside. Thomas looking for a move and he gets it there. That's Ryan Thomas. Gets on the board for the first night, for the first time tonight. Rattlers running into some foul trouble early. So far, right now on the floor, we have three people with two fouls each. As Joe almost picks up another one there. And he will get that one. That will be his third. On the game. Rattlers unfortunately got into the double bonus for the Mules as they were frequently sent to the line and they almost turn it over there. Wolf gets it back and another foul called there. I think it will be on Joe as he picks up two quick fouls here. Less than a minute into the half he now has four. Some big trouble there. Justin Alexander getting ready to check in for Joe. Joe not looking happy with those two quick fouls. Rattlers are going to have to make do without him. Most likely until the end of the game. J.J. Bolden almost comes up with the steal. But it will be Mule's ball. Another foul called on the Rattlers, this time on Just Justin Alexander now. He has three fouls as Dylan Deck gets the end one. He will go for that three-pointer right now. And a lane violation called on Christian Bauer. Rattlers appearing to a little bit be a little bit uh, ripping at the seams here. Efi is back in the game as Justin Alexander has three fouls. Central Missouri picks up on that second chance at the line. Now ahead by two. One minute into this half. Efi pulls up from the top of the key. And a rebound by Robinson. And a foul called will be on Robinson this time. Got a little worried it would be on JJ. Ethy on the floor. He also has three fouls, so the posts for the Rowlers are in a lot of trouble here. As Joe Monroe has four, and Justin Alexander also has three, along with Ethy. Ethy. Kicks it out to Christian, who almost pulls up for a three-pointer. Efi now down low. Back to Efi, and he pulls up, and it dribbles in there. As he picks up his first two points on the game. Score tight again here. Appeared to be a late whistle there, but it is on Efi. And he now has four fouls. The Rattlers have four quick fouls in just the first two minutes of the half. Be some trouble here as Fred Wilson will check in. The Rattlers will now have four guards on the floor. As Dylan Deck 
Gets that first free throw. He knocks in the second one. As the Mules are back up to, it's been a back and forth game. The largest lead was in the first by the Rattlers, who led only by five. Interesting to see how this offense is going to work with four guards. It's Ryan Thomas picks up a, a nice post move there. For his fourth point on the game. Oh, and a clean block by Thomas. Because he also picks up the rebound. A little scary to be aggressive on defense for the Rattlers with that foul trouble. JJ drives in. The Rattlers are picking up some momentum here. The whole bench stands up. The Rattlers now lead by two. Nice momentum change there for the Rattlers as they are able to get that block and, and capitalize on the other end. Fred Wilson and a charge called. Rattlers are really gaining momentum here. Three straight good calls for the Rattlers. TJ White now in, as well as Ryan Donald, who we saw a lot of in the first half, able to draw a lot of fouls from the Rattlers. Bauer now bringing up the ball. Ryan Thomas down low again. We'll see if he can do it again. And he draws a foul. As the only true postman out there, he's been, been effective on both on defense and offense. He'll be on. Foul was on the floor as Christian Bauer will take the inbound. Marvin Witt. Fred Wilson pulls up, unable to draw the foul. Remains on the Rattlers side. The Rattlers bench really feeling the energy of this game that has picked up. Quite vibrant and emotional each play. Ryan Thomas again, a nice gist from J.J. Bolton. Ryan Thomas so far this half being the spark the Rattlers need. They now gain a four point lead here in the second half. Joe being quite vocal on the bench as well as the rest of the Rattlers. And a foul by J.J. Bolton. That'll be his third foul, 15 foul. Some fans here, Rattler fans getting a little upset with all these fouls that have been called, which have been a lot so far this game. And a nice pull up, another late call this time on Ryan Thomas. That'll be his third foul on the game. I believe it's only maybe two or three Rattlers who do not have at least three fouls so far on this game. TJ White at the line, able to knock that first one in. Foul count is 6-3. Christian Bauer getting called for a second lane violation. He's a little confused as to why. The Mules will get another chance at the line for TJ White. Not really sure what Christian is doing, but the refs don't like it. He's even called twice. Then Marvin Witt with a rebound. A foul called there on TJ White. He returns the favor for the Rattlers. But I'll be on the floor. Foul count now, six to four. Oh, 
Bryce Smith will be in for J.J. Bolton. Rattlers still rolling with just one post. We have Bryce Smith, Fred Wilson, Christian Bauer, Marvin Witt, and Ryan Thomas on the floor. Another foul there on the Mules. Another on the floor foul. The refs may be trying to even up that foul count. They're playing with two points. And two guards on one post. Rattlers seem to be doing well though. They're able to figure it out. I'm sure he's, oh, and Ryan Thomas loses the ball there in the double team. T.J. White takes it all the way in for the fast break layup as the Mules are within one. Mules again going to that 2-3 trap zone they've been running throughout the game. Pull up three. Bryce with the rebound, unable to get it. Ryan Thomas puts it back. Rattlers unable to connect on those putbacks. Uh, and a foul called on the Rattlers. Um, Bryce Smith. And just five minutes into this game, the Rattlers have seven fouls. They are already in the bonus. Not a good sign for the Rattlers. That 15 minutes left in regulation going to be a long half for the Rattlers. Just a reminder, fans, to be sure to check out the conclusion of the Thanksgiving Classic as your Rattlers play again tomorrow at 7.30 against Emporia State, who played earlier today right here in Bill Creehy Arena. It will be a Rattler day tomorrow as the women start off with a game at 2.30. Then we'll, we'll have a 5 p.m. game concluding uh, the Thanksgiving Classic. The Rattlers will be on the tail end as they play Emporia State, who won their game in a blowout earlier today against Southeastern Oklahoma State. Interested to see uh, how the Rattlers are going to approach defense now, if they're going to kind of draw back and go to a zone, or what's going to happen. They really cannot afford any more fouls. Every foul now will be a trip to the line. As Dalen Robinson will take the one and one. Justin Alexander now back in the game for Ryan Thomas. Justin, three fouls. Great effort from Ryan Thomas. A really great spark there in that second half while he was in. The only post player on the floor now. Justin Alexander is the only true post out there as McMurray now pushes a one-point lead over the Rattlers. Jumper from Bryce Smith, a little off. Marvin tries to come up with the rebound, but cannot. Robinson taking it up the floor. Rattlers continue to be in a man defense. A lot of screening for the Mules. Five seconds left on the shot clock. It, so, shot clock. The Mule's got to do something in a pull-up jumper there. Three-pointer by Preston Bruins. Able to beat the shot clock. Mule's up by four now. A lot of ball distribution here for this zone defense. No one pulled up yet. Nice pass from, great pass from uh, Fred Wilson. 
able to snake it to Bryce Smith, who pulls up for a jumper for his. Oh, did the Mules answer back with another three-pointer? Their second in a row. And excuse, excuse me, that was a three-pointer by Bryce Smith. Pull up three by Fred Wilson. They answer right back. Was actually a two-pointer, as I am corrected there. Thought that one was a three. Rattlers now down by two in an aggressive game. High energy. We'll be right back on Rattlers Live. Welcome back to beautiful Bill Grehe Arena. Where it is, the Rattlers trailing Central Missouri 50 to 48 with 13 minutes and 13 seconds left. Back and forth contest here in the second half. Central Missouri with a, a duo of three pointers have really been daggers for St. Mary's. Open looks, and this is another one in the corner. This one's an air ball, although a nice rebound by Ryan Donald to keep possession alive. The shot clock ticking down, puts up the shot, no good. And then an over the back foul in an attempt to get the rebound. So it will be St. Mary's basketball. Bryce Smith inbounding it. Again, that small ball look for St. Mary's where three, uh, three point guards, if you will, are in the ball game. Bryce Smith, Christian Bauer, and Marvin Witt. Haven't seen this lineup very often this season, but it's because of all the uh, A injuries and then B foul trouble for the St. Mary's lineup. Robin's been talking about that throughout the second half. Justin Alexander now trying to go to work down low. Puts up a beautiful little baby hook. And Alexander heating up now for St. Mary's to tie the game 50 all. Jalen Robinson went inside. TJ White able to track down the ball and it gets back out to Robinson with 10 on the shot clock. He attacks the basket, puts a nice step back. No good there. Mad Josh now with back-to-back -back three pointers that were no good. Rattlers retake the ball with a chance to go up. Foul trouble galore tonight for St. Mary's, but still putting together an effective game against a very talented opponent. Central Missouri again coming in 5-0. St. Mary's 4-1. Fred Wilson not able to get that to roll in. Open look from the corner. It would have been a two. And Alexander, no basket on that one. Foul came before the shot. That will be foul number four on Justin Alexander. So just like that, Alexander joins Joe Monroe in the four foul department. Ryan Thomas will come in in place of him. And with that media timeout, we remind you that tomorrow is the uh, conclusion of the St. Mary's Thanksgiving Classic. 
St. Mary's takes the nightcap game at 7.30. Will they be going for a 2-0 mark in the tournament? Or will they be going for the 1-1 one one record? We will find out here down the stretch. And again, if you haven't already, rattlergear.com is the place to be this evening as the uh, Cyber Monday, Black Friday, Gray Thursday, whatever kind of sale you want to call it, free shipping on all purchases of $25 or more through Cyber Monday. So we'll take a quick time out here as the Rattlers and Mules all tied up at 50-50. You're watching the Rattler Network. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. So the mules find themselves at the line. Dylan Deck. Misses that off the front of the rim. Fred Wilson with the rebound. Leading score tonight for St. Mary's is Fred Wilson with 13. Marvin Witt right behind him with 11. Now Witt had 11 at the half and 13 is his season high. So we'll see if he can match or eclipse that total. Christian Bauer finds Bolton in the corner who attempts to drive the baseline. Fouled and then rams pretty hard into the official. But everyone is okay. Mules are over the limit, so Bolton will go to the line. Foul called there on TJ White, his second. Both teams in the bonus in this game. Eight fouls on St. Mary's, seven on the Mules. Bolton able to connect on that one. 51-50 lead for your Rattlers. And for Robin Johnson and myself, we do thank all of you all for spending your Thanksgiving holiday weekend with us here at the Rattler Network, watching the Rattlers and Mules and hopefully you were able to catch some of the Southeastern Oklahoma State Emporia State game earlier in the day. Or once again, it was Emporia State winning that. They will match up against the Rattlers tomorrow night. Southeastern Oklahoma State gets the Mules. Bolton goes one for one at the line. Rattlers lead stays at one. That's Preston Bruins with the ball along the wing. Bolton and TJ White collide. White hits the floor, but no foul called. Dylan Deck with the shot. No good, and it dribbles out of bounds off the mules. So, Rattler basketball. You know, we started the game off talking about the low scoring nature of the Rattlers. They like games in the 50s and the 60s. They're a defensive minded team, a rebounding team, and we, and we talked about how the Rattlers really can rebound from all positions on the floor. And Witt and Bolt, Bolton, two guys you might not think would be terrific rebounders, but they are. And Bolton finding Witt underneath the basket, no good. Rattlers beside themselves along the bench. Justin Alexander waving the white towel there for a moment, thinking the foul should have been called. Witt, you like the, the mindset, though. You see the, the wiggle he has down toward the basket. And another foul called on St. Mary's. And that is number four on Ryan Thomas. So it's now kind of a hot potato situation for the Rattlers with four foul posts. One comes in, one goes out, and the one coming in is Joe Monroe with four fouls. And again, Justin Alexander on the bench with four. Ryan Thomas on the bench with four. I believe Ife AK still has three, but he might have picked up, he picked up a fourth as well. And Isaiah Thomas, or Isaiah Thomas, wish he was available tonight. Isaiah Matthews, rather, not available for the Rattlers this evening. I believe he suffered an injury in practice during the week. The Rowdy Rattlers tried to do their best to get the Mules to miss their free throws, but it didn't work. Mules regain a one-point lead. So if you wonder why you see such a small lineup on the floor, I mean, that's why. They have no other options. And now it is Bolton, Bauer, Wilson, Monroe, and Witt. As small as you've seen the Rattlers all season. And Monroe just gets pushed to the ground underneath the basket. He comes back, and somebody's going to get a foul here in a second here. 
And it is a blocking call on number 24, Dylan Deck, for the Mules. I tell you what, Valor fans, that's the fourth on Deck. Someone was going to get a foul. It was either Monroe or Deck because those two guys were going back and forth. Monroe hit the floor, came up, and kind of gave a side shove to, to Deck. No foul called. He worked his way underneath the basket pretty hard. Deck tried to draw the charge, but it didn't work. Monroe good on the first foul shot. So the Mules with a little bit of foul trouble now as Deck picks up his fourth. He will be substituted out of the game. Coming in for Deck, number 32, Ryan Donald. Six foot seven forward out of Cordova, Tennessee. So Monroe trying to regain the lead for the Rattlers and he can't. Rattles off the rim. 52-52 your score. And that long shot eventually hauled in by Fred Wilson. Under 10 minutes here left in the second half. Bauer running the St. Mary's offense. We haven't seen Witt be able to connect quite like he did early. Had a quick seven points. But it's Bolton connecting from three-point range. Rattlers up by three. And J.J. Bolton hitting from outside now in double figures with 11 and what a foul call there. The Rattler fans standing up beside themselves and we've said that a couple times this evening. I believe that went against Witt, it, it did his first of the night. Crazy sequence there as Bolton hits the quick shot and the Mules try to get it in transition and they get the foul out, out of it. At the line, Dalen Robinson, six foot senior guard out of Kansas City, Missouri, actually transferred into Central Missouri from Texas Tech. The first shot, good. And that does bring your score to 55-54 St. Mary's. Bauer thought about the three, kicks it over to Bolton, hits a wide open. Fred Wilson in the corner, cannot get the shot. Donald with the rebound, and the Mules will try to push up the offense here. Wilson trying uh, to extend to his team high point total of 13. Three Rattlers in double figures tonight. Preston Bruins handling the ball for the Mules, passes it back out to Dalen Robinson, puts a move on Witt, attacks the basket, Goes around Monroe, but turns the ball over. Good defense by J.J. Bolton, who connects with Witt under the basket among some trees and gets fouled. And if he hadn't gotten fouled, Joe Monroe was there for the putback, but it wasn't needed as Witt will head to the free throw line for two. So again, you see the, the instant offense for the Rattlers this evening really coming from Marvin Witt. A pint-sized, explosive score for St. Mary's. Brings a little bit of that wow to the offense. Hits the first free throw. St. Mary's back up by two. As I said earlier, uh, Marvin Witt came in the game. Seven for 11 at the free throw line. Hits both there. He's actually taken more shots than anyone on the uh, St. Mary's team this season, 11 for 27 overall. Rather, most uh, three-point shots by anybody on the team, 11 for 27, 15 for 48 overall. So interesting uh, stat line there for him coming into the ball game. Only four non-three-point baskets made this season. We've seen him, though, be much more versatile than, than just a three-point shooter this evening, really attacking the basket with great regularity. An off-balance desperation shot there by Jordan Epps. Ball ends up back in Witt's hands. Kicks it out to Bauer, bang! Three point shot, Bauer excited and bangs his chest after that one. Rattlers with their biggest lead of the half, 60 to 54 with 7.43 left in the second half. We're gonna take a quick break as the Rattlers trying to push away. You're watching Rattler Basketball live on the Rattler Network.
looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you got to make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. So once again, Rattlers back up by six, their largest lead of the second half. A big three-point shot by Christian Bauer. Jordan Epps thinks about the three there, but thinks better of it. Mules will reset their offense. Bauer, six points in the game. We talked about early in the game, kind of a, uh, a diligent shooter. Takes his shots when they're there. Doesn't force too many, more of a, a distributor on the offensive end. And it's going to be a foul on St. Mary's. Number 10, Christian Bauer. And that brings a timeout on the floor. We'll stay here with you, media timeout. But Bauer, a good distributor for the St. Mary's offense, but not a shy to take three-pointers when they're there. And Witt with a, a great pass to a wide-open Bauer, able to connect. And a big early season game for St. Mary's, kind of a, a measuring stick kind of game out of a uh, out of conference, out of region even, although that seems a little strange. Central Missouri and St. Mary's uh, classic regional rivals there for a long time, but with the regional realignment, that's no longer the case. But a good measuring stick kind of game for both squads. Central Missouri is such a, uh, a class organization, really, the way they, they run their stuff. St. Mary's, any Saint, longtime St. Mary's fan knows them well in, in the baseball ranks. It seemed like every year, the regional uh, matchup came down to St. Mary's Central Missouri. Of course, in the 01 championship run, it was the Rattlers getting better of Central Missouri. Flashback to 2011, it was C Central Missouri getting better of the Rattlers here at VJ Keith Field. And then 2012, it was the Rattlers <laughs> beating Central Missouri at their field for the regional title. So a good rivalry between these two schools now taken onto the basketball court. The five on the floor for St. Mary's still. Marvin Witt, Fred Wilson, Christian Bauer, J.J. Bolton, and Joe Monroe. Your foul trouble situation for St. Mary's. Joe Monroe with four, Bolton with three, Bauer with two, Wilson and Witt with one apiece. First free throw, good. So it's not likely you'll see too many uh, lineups now for St. Mary's with two big men. Looks like they're probably going to go the distance now with just one on the floor, play some small ball, and see where it takes them. Central Missouri able to trim the deficit to four. Bauer hesitates on the three. Rattler's trying to reset their offense. Witt open in the far corner if Bolton can find him. It's gonna be Bolton driving to the basket possibly. Kicks it all, nice pass to Fred Wilson. Not able to connect. Defensive board by John Gillum. And the Mules will push it up court with 6.51 remaining. That shot short. Front rim and Marvin Witt able to get the rebound. We're having some live stat issues tonight, so we do apologize for the lack of statistical updates. But Witt, all you need to know right now is his 15th point on that lay-in. Witt also doing a great job on the, on the rebounding department. He's got to have five or six already on the evening. We started the night talking about that. A very good rebounder for his position, especially for his size. Reminds you of the, of the boxing uh, phrase, kind of a pound-for-pound pound rebounder. Got to be one of the better ones going. And Joe Monroe, an emphatic dunk. Out of bounds, and his cheering section goes nuts. Joe Monroe with a defensive stop there. All that was missing was the finger wag. 14 seconds left on the shot clock. Mules do retain possession. Inbounding the ball is Dalen Robinson. Finds Epps in the corner. But a foul. J.J. Bolton. As number 33, Kyle Wolf was coming off the screen and found his way to the floor. Bolton 
now with four fouls as well. So that quite problematic for the Rattlers as he uh, has some height for that guard position. And the Rattlers are substituting in Bryce Smith after this shot, which is good. So once again, the Rattlers will play even smaller ball. And if our count is right, we have one, two, three, four guys on the bench right now with four fouls and another in the game with four fouls. So we'll see the impact that makes going down the stretch. Four point game now with six minutes remaining. Can the Rattlers find enough offense to keep this going? Bryce Smith is in the game. Marvin Witt, Christian Bauer, Fred Wilson, and Joe Monroe. Marvin Witt tries his hand from three. No good, but Monroe with the putback. Good. Able to get up. Got a putback opportunity. Got his own miss and connected off glass there and again. Might be just out of camera view. No, they are in camera view. You see some of Joe Monroe's cheering section in, in the arena tonight going bananas with every shot he makes. Monroe now with three points. And a big block moments ago. But for an undersized team right now, Monroe doing some dirty work for the Rattlers down low, able to bring in that offensive board. Your score now 64-58. And Fred Wilson called for the foul. Going for the loose rebound. Could have gone either way there. He gets both teams in the bonus. It's all free throws down the stretch now. Fred Wilson picking up his second foul. Two shots coming up now for Ryan Donald. Junior transfer from Shawnee Community College. Too long on the first. The Rowdy Rattlers, they must have said something pretty funny there because they are laughing pretty hard that he missed that shot. Rowdy Rattlers, if you don't know, they have some fun there in the cheering section. The cheering section a little smaller tonight than it usually is with all the students off campus and back home for Thanksgiving weekend, but they have good shenanigans back there. One of their uh, classic ones is, you know, will you marry me? And then if they make the shot, they take that as a yes. Donald does make the second. Cuts the deficit to five. Witt from, from three. Oh, does not rattle in. Fast break opportunity for the Mules if they take it. And Robinson does drive to the basket, guarded by Witt. Witt, you might not know it by his height, but one of the better Rattler defenders, just a feisty, tenacious guy. And still early in the season, so we do mention the height quite a bit, but as you probably have already been able to tell, the height not a factor with that guy. Only five foot nine, but one of the better players on the court at all times. That shot not able to fall. Monroe gets the rebound, wrestled to the floor, and they call him with the chart, with the uh, travel rather. And Coach Z pulling a Mike Tomlin out there on the court right now. I cannot believe that that was called. He had two guys draped all around him. Yeah, he went to the floor and traveled because he was taken down, but Monroe's effort not rewarded. Robinson inbounding once again. Trying to find somebody able to get back to TJ White. Coming into tonight's game, Rattlers averaging 67.2 points. Their opponents averaging 59.2. Almost the exact score you have right now with four minutes left. Mules trying to find something. Robinson with a nice shot, but can't get it. Wolf gets the offensive board. Tries to find TJ White. Timeout on the floor before that desperation pass. We'll take a quick break, too. Under four minutes left. Exciting action here from Bill Greer Arena. 
You're watching Rattler Basketball live on the Rattler Network. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. And we welcome you back. Rattlers up 64-59. Ten fouls for St. Mary's this half. Nine for the Mules. Rattlers in boatloads of trouble here in the foul department. A nice offensive move by, I believe, T.J. White, and he called for the travel as Joe Monroe pounding the floor. Monroe went down onto the court to try, uh, try to get in that loose uh, ball, and his effort once again paying dividends. If there's one trademark trait that Joe Monroe brings to the St. Mary's team as we have a media timeout here with 3.48 remaining, it is his effort and hustle. It's really what makes him such an ideal bench player for St. Mary's. He comes off the bench, and it, it just seems like every game it's either a, a dunk, it's a putback, it's a block, it's something that he's able to put his stamp on the game somehow. I think on the other side of that equation, you've seen tonight perhaps not used to the starting role, maybe a little overly aggressive at times, picked up a lot of fouls early. Two quick fouls, if I'm not mistaken, to start off the second half. you got to believe that fourth foul almost out of frustration more than anything. But still, making an impact down the stretch. Hasn't picked up foul number five yet. And he, if he can stay in this game, will be a key factor for St. Mary's moving forward. Just a touch on the uh, holiday Christmas action moving forward for St. Mary's. Of course, they have Emporia State tomorrow night here at Bill Grahe Arena at 7.30 p.m. They then travel to Texas A&M Kingsville to take on the Javelinas of the Lone Star Conference on December 7th. They'll be back home for a pair of games, uh, Heartland Conference action, no less, as they'll open up their Heartland slate of play against Fort, uh, Arkansas Fort Smith on December 19th at 7.30. That is a Thursday night. And then at 3 p.m. on the 21st of December against Roger State. So that'll be the uh, all they have left of this uh, 2013 season. J.J. Bolton inbounds to Christian Bauer, who brings it up court. Rattlers with a five-point lead, just over three and a half minutes. It'll be interesting to see if they can close out this game. They open up the season in the Las Vegas Classic. Oh, and a turnover, miscommunication between the two senior captains, Fred Wilson and Christian Bauer. They open up the, the season able to get leads on opponents in Vegas, two good opponents at that, Missouri Southern State and Rollins College. But their play down the stretch, not as good. They had about a 15-point lead against Rollins, and they ended up winning 55-54. Also led against Missouri Southern State and lost by seven. And a foul here for the Rattlers, so their composure being tested now, especially so with all of the foul trouble. And it will be Ryan Thomas coming back in. And we mentioned the foul trouble, and that was the fifth foul on Joe Monroe. And Joe being you know, consolidated a little bit there, or consoled rather, on the bench for picking up his fifth foul. Foul trouble, uh, no doubt tonight for Joe, but good game in other regards with that block and also some putback opportunities for St. Mary's. It's Dalen Robinson at the foul line. Gets the first to fall. So we're coming in for Joe Monroe is number 43, jo uh, Ryan Thomas, a first-year Rattler, six-foot-eight forward center. As both foul shots fall, he's out of Riverton, Utah. So Rattlers lead trimmed to three. One thing to keep an eye on here, something to think about, is overtime. And yes, we, we did say that foul trouble for St. Mary's. Can they withstand an extra five-minute stanza of action already with one player fouling out, one starter at that? So Ryan Thomas with four fouls, but it's Marvin Witt. Three goes up off the backboard, and the ball will go back to Central Missouri with an opportunity to tie. 
St. Mary's just has to find something here to close this game out. Can they dig deep enough? Do they have enough depth on the bench to even dig toward to close this game out? Three players now essentially unavailable in addition to the other four that did not dress this evening that are redshirting. So a depleted St. Mary's bench. Dalen Robinson with a nice move. No good, but no matter as T.J. White puts it back in and cuts the deficit to one. As we approach the two-minute mark of this game, St. Mary's trying to find something offensively. The three-point shot worked there for a while. It helped build up a six-point lead, but that six-point lead seems so long ago. Tom, they're trying to get it down to Thomas, but he is not open. Fred Wilson able to kick it back over to Bauer, finds Bolton, who drives, steps back. Seven on the shot clock. They get it to Ryan Thomas out of bounds. Thomas was stumbling a little bit there. Not sure if one of those defenders pulled the chair on him. So only four seconds on the shot clock. Rattler's in very dangerous territory, finding another wasted opportunity here. Uh, a, a wasted offensive possession, rather. Bauer will inbound it. And before he does, a timeout on the floor. This might be a, a re official review. And that's exactly what it is. So maybe trying to determine uh, who that ball went off of. We'll go try to check out all the angles of the instant replay. We'll take a brief timeout here with them. 150 left. Rattlers clinging to a one-point lead here on the opening day of the St. Mary's Thanksgiving Classic. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to the Rattler Network's play stands as called. Rattler's ball, but it doesn't matter. Offensive foul on who else? Ryan Thomas, the second Rattler fouls out on the inbounds pass. Coach Z, none too happy as he paces the sideline. So things unraveling a bit for St. Mary's at that post position. Joe Monroe steps in, he too, with four fouls. Only so many more bodies left on the bench. Ife AK and Jared Anthony, about all that's left. Witt goes for the steal, can't get it. Dalen Robinson now with a chance to drive. He gets the basket, but no foul. Offensive foul. Number 24. Dylan Deck picks up number five, so the Mules now have a player foul out. Kevin Wilson drawing the charge there. So Marvin Witt went for the steal, missed. Kind of that classic situation almost you see in football. A corner bites on a pass, wasn't able to intercept it, left a wide open receiver. Instead there it was a wide open lane for Dalen Robinson to drive. He got the basket, but it didn't matter as the foul was called beforehand. 
So the Rattlers bailed out with 135 remaining. Rattlers offense has dried up for a while now. And if you're following the live on live stats, again, we apologize. A lot of technical errors tonight with the equipment. Just now, Alexander trying to get going down low. Can't get the hook shot to fall. Dalen Robinson gets the rebound, and it might be foul number five on Justin Alexander. And it is. So Justin Alexander in the game for about 20 or 25 seconds, and he too heads back to the bench. A little bit of a cheap foul there. He can't believe it. It'll be Efi AK coming in. So we kid you not when we say this, the Rattlers are quite literally running out of bodies. Efi AK comes in with four fouls. Justin B or JJ Bolton with four fouls on the court as well. The only other Rattlers available tonight on the bench, Bryce Smith and Jared Anthony. So the Rattlers down to their final seven players. And with uh, everyone in the bonus, Robbins is at the line, ties it up. The early free throw shooting troubles of the Mules seem uh, long ago as they're, they've done quite well here in the second half. Jinx as he misses number two. So tie game, 116 left. Can the Rattlers get anything going? It's been the same thing we've been asking for quite a while. They've been stuck on 64. And Coach Z, seen enough, he calls a timeout. We'll try to draw something up. We'll see if it's a lucky seven for St. Mary's as they are down to their final seven players available tonight. 109 left, all knotted up at 64. We'll be right back here on the Rattler Network. Welcome back. The score is 64-64. Chad Peters here, joined by Robin Johnson, helping us uh, with some to clear up some of those stats matters right now. And uh, David, Brian, Joe, if you guys are listening, we don't know how you do this. This is uh, quite the gig to, and quite the uh, the seat to replace, if you will. The, the three of you guys, you all do a magnificent job, and we're honored to be trying to bring you tonight's broadcast. Hopefully, it's a Rattler win, trying to improve to five and one on the season. Rattler fans trying to get them into this game as we have one minute remaining. 14 on the shot clock. The Rattlers will gear up their offense now. Bolton in the corner looking for Ifiake instead drives the hoop. Finds Marvin Witt slashing. Oh, what a brilliant pass and play. Marvin Witt drove the baseline and, and uh, J.J. Bolton found him. And the Rattler bench goes wild with 40 seconds left. Rattlers go up by two. Sixty-six, sixty-four. your score, 27 seconds, 16 on the shot clock. Galen Robinson trying to put their offense into work. He drives the basket, and it goes out of bounds. What a defensive stand by the Rattlers with 20 seconds left. This one might go to the replay monitor as well. Robinson thought he had an alley there. I believe he passed it inside to T.J. White. But White, instead of looked like from our vantage point, it might have gone off of White's uh, knee. Kind of grazed his pants. But this one will go to review. And the implementation of uh, the instant replay a few years back in college basketball, a big, big thing tonight. A big decision here. Rattlers leading by two. Only 20.1 seconds left. If it's Rattlers ball, of course, it goes without saying. The Central Missouri Mules will, will foul them. 
send them to the line and see if they can extend this game a little bit while longer. So the play stands. Or at least in my interpretation of the referee's body language as such, the play does stand. And it does. Rattler basketball, a trademark as always, defensive stoppages, and that was what you saw there. So it's J.J. Bolton inbounding the ball. You got to believe you want the ball in Marvin Witt's hands at this point. And it is Witt that gets the ball, passes it back down to Bolton. Bolton gets it off to Bow or to Bryce Smith, but first Bolton fouled. So with 16 ticks left in this game, Bolton will head to the free throw line to give the Rattlers an opportunity to go up by two possessions. Bolton coming into tonight in his first season with the Rattlers. Hopefully not an omen of what's to come. One for seven at the free throw line this season. But he makes the biggest one yet. 67 now, 64 your score. A, a, a big time pressure situation for Bolton. You love the fact that he so calmly hit that first one. And he's good there too. So Rattlers go up by two possessions. Four point lead and the Rattlers holding strong here with 16 seconds remaining. Timeout on the floor. We'll take a quick timeout too. You're watching all the Rattler basketball right here on the Rattler Network. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Rattler fans dancing during that media timeout. We'll see if the Rattlers can dance after. Final 15 seconds. Dalen Robinson drives to the basket. Easy lay-in for the Mules with 10 seconds left now. Not quite the defensive effort the Rattlers wanted as they kind of parted uh, the lane there and just gave him an easy basket. Another timeout on the floor. Quick scoring recap of the night. Witt with that last basket he had moments ago, 17 points. That's a career high for him as a Rattler, eclipsing his old mark of 13. Bolton with 13. Tonight he came in averaging a shade under four points a game. So he too exceeding his typical production. Fred Smith with 13. He was uh, among the Rattlers leading scorers this season with nine a game. But definitely Witt and Bolton both stepping up, combining for 30 of the Rattlers 68 points. And another opportunity here. Big free throws coming as the Rattlers will inbound the ball. The Mules will go for the foul and it will be decided at the line. Rattlers uh, pretty much all guards on the floor, as you would expect. Fred Wilson gets mauled. And then, like a running back breaking th through daylight, cups the ball and heads to the free throw line. Thought he might have done Bo Jackson on us there and kind of just run through the tunnel, but he headed to the free throw stripe. So Fred Wilson now with two more big shots for St. Mary's. He's been among uh, the Rattlers' more efficient free throw shooters this season, 8 of 12 coming in. Too short on the first. So a big shot now coming up for Wilson with nine seconds remaining. The Rattler's trying to at least extend it to three. And that one's short as well. No timeout here for the Mules. They'll bring it up court. It is Dalen Robinson driving to the hoop. A nice side slide move. Oh, and he gets the shot and the foul. What a move by Dalen Robinson. As the score all knotted up at 68. So Robinson there put the sidestep move, attacked the basket, then got swiped for the foul, but the shot went in. It was Bolton with the foul, so a lot of action there. Bolton fouling out in the process. We will take a second to take a breath. Rattlers and Mules tied up 
but the Mules in position to take the lead with two and a half seconds left. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. So the biggest free throw, throw of them all coming up right here, Dalen Robinson with one shot. Shooting into the cheering section. And it does not fall. It rattles out. EFAK with the shot. Marvin Witt shoots a three-quarters court shot, but it rattles up off of the underbelly of the scoreboard. So we are going to overtime. Dalen Robinson not able to get the free throw. It rattles out. EFAK gets the ball, gets it into Witt's hands. Witt not able to connect on the desperation shot. So we do go to OT. And as we said earlier, maybe the the worst of all propositions for St. Mary's in a sense as the Rattlers down to their final six players with Bolton fouling out moments ago. And EFAK with four fouls will have to play the entire overtime without picking up a foul or else the Rattlers will be down to their final big man, Jared Anthony. Little used Jared Anthony. And to touch on that, the kind of situation we got here, EFAK, a Division I transfer out of Louisiana Monroe. And Jared Anthony, an unconventional junior transfer, 6'11 post, 27 years old, comes from Chili's. And we'll tell you more about that story later in the year, but we kid you not, he had played basketball, wasn't playing anymore, was waiting tables, heard about St. Mary's basketball, tried out, and Oh, talented guy, six foot eleven. Has had some good college basketball experience, but him and Ifiak, who originally hails from Nigeria, the only two Rattler big men left. It will be Ak taking the tip here in OT. So five more minutes of basketball with the score all tied up at 68 all. Ak wins the tip, gets it to Marvin Witt. So your five Rattlers on the floor. Well, there's not many left. So the process of elimination. It's Bryce Smith. Christian Bauer, Fred Wilson, Marvin Witt, and uh, AK, and it's Bryce Smith with a putback. Christian Bauer attacks the basket. Bryce Smith standing there all alone, puts it back in. Not he, a guy you're really expecting for the putback, but he's right there in this tight game. And Smith coming off the bench to fill in for J.J. Bolton. We talked earlier, Smith really coming along. You know, came in as a kind of an undersized small freshman. He's put on a lot of muscle over the years. We had to update his bio the other day, 20 pounds added and a guy who gained some valuable uh, pressure playing time last in the playoffs when Bauer fouled out. A three-point shot for Wolf, no good. Rather, Preston Bruins with the shot, no good. Wolf with the rebound. Fresh shot clock for the Mules. The Rattlers are up by two. We apologize for the scoreboard, occasionally taking a little longer to go. Bauer, great hustle, gets the ball back to Smith. Just to finish out on that thought, under uh, understaffed uh, Thanksgiving uh, game here with all of our students. We mentioned Joe, David, Brian, all of our guys out right now so we do uh, thank for you for your patience bearing with us with the scoreboard getting updated but the Rattlers trying to do their own work now Fred Wilson top the key Bauer gets it inside to AK Wilson drives penetrates tries to get to the AK but it turns it over instead and it's Donald bringing it up your foul situation as it stands now AK not able to get the steal thought he had it oh and it is a charge I think he's no, two, yeah, budget. my bad. I thought, I thought we might get the charge there for a second. It's a two-point shot and the opportunity for the, uh, for the free throw. Uh, so all tied up at 70. And that one goes kind of a, the and one is a nightmare for the Rattlers now as that is how the Mules got back in this game. Every possession critical now for the Rattlers as the Mules gain a one-point lead. Efi, AK, the only big man out there, has four fouls. Needs to be careful. Quite an exciting game here. I wanted to jump back on the broadcast and get into some of the action. 
Bauer trying to reset the offense with 17 seconds left on the shot clock. Wilson along the wing, almost an up and down. Got the ball back. He's been having a little bit of trouble on some of those drives this evening. Quick hands by the Mules. Step back shot, too long. Robinson pulls it in. Under three minutes remaining now. The Mules up by one. Rattlers hadn't trailed for a while. You gotta wonder, Chad, what does a game like this do to the team chemistry? I mean, these guys have really pulled together, especially in the final minutes. Well, that might have been a travel, no? Oh, that, that might have been a travel, too. Yeah, take, uh, so uh, Witt taking it off the front. chin for the offensive charge. Thought for a moment, a moment uh, before that, Bruins might have had the, the travel, but no, good call there. And Witt draws the charge. So now two mules with four fouls on the court. Ryan Donald with four, and Dalen Robinson, who's been a big-time player tonight with 16 points, also with four fouls. It was Dalen Robinson with that great lay-in to end regulation, missed the, the winning three, uh, free throw, or the go-ahead free throw, rather. Christian lays it up, unable to get it. And Bryce Smith mistimed his jump a little bit, had a hard fall, but fortunately okay. You talk about the team chemistry, yeah, early season game like this can do a lot to bring a, a group of guys together. Wolf with a nice shot from along the baseline puts them back up by three. Christian pushing it up quick there. Trying to make something happen. Clock winding down. Marvin pulls up for a three, unable to get it. Christian with the rebound and a foul is called. Christian will go to the line. And that might be number five on Donald, no? Uh, even better for the Rattler standpoint, number Five on number 11. Dalen Robinson is out. I believe that's the second mule to foul out. Witt, not sure that's the shot that the Rattlers uh, coaches wanted, but tested the hot hand. He's got 17 points tonight to lead all scores. Fortunately for St. Mary's, Bauer able to bring in the rebound, and he now finds himself at the free throw line. As we said earlier, a good free throw shooter this season came into the game shooting eight of nine. And gets the first. A lot of things going on in this game. A lot of things to track. A lot of exciting Thanksgiving basketball action. Hey, yeah, so a lane violation there by, by, uh, by Donald. You probably saw him move in. They let Bauer continue with the... Uh, the motion of his free throw, but as soon as he missed, they're awarding him an extra. Kind of seemed like that might have messed up his shot a little bit, but he will get another chance here. Unable to get that second one. Marvin able to pull up with the rebound after a tip from AK. Yeah, I can't say enough. Marvin Witt's ability to rebound the basketball, just phenomenal. And Witt drives the basket and now goes to the free throw line himself. Not happy with the foul he took there. Has some words, I believe, for Donald and so Jordan Epps now picks up his fourth foul so three players in all on the floor with four fouls two belonging to the Mules Donald and Epps and then it's AK with four for St. Mary's so in a way potentially Bowers free throw miss a blessing as the Rattlers come out of it with an opportunity potentially to tie with 131 left in the game and you see the uh, the refs toweling the floor there. And again, another example of a, a studentless Thanksgiving break game. No uh, student moppers there to, to wipe up the sweat. So Witt heads back to the free throw line. Rattler's down by two. You hear some screaming from the Mules in attendance trying to get him to miss, but M Witt will not. Gets the first. 18 points now for the five foot nine transfer. A season high for Witt and such a crucial game, or exciting game rather, as he knocks down that second one. Tie game once again. These two teams are really just cruel if they go double overtime in this yes. one with the amount of foul trouble we've seen. I think both teams' benches will be tested at that point. Epps drives looking for somebody, finds Wolf in the corner, defended by Wilson, gets it back down low to White. AK tries to contest the shot. Hank got enough of it. Bauer brings in the rebound with 108 remaining. 
So the Rattlers with an opportunity to retake the lead after trailing by three early in overtime. Rattlers really need to make a sh Oh, why? Bauer oh, takes great. it. Yes, Bauer with the basket. Just beautifully saw an opening and took it in. No doubt on that one. So with under a minute left, Rattlers back up by two. And it's Jordan Epps now taking it to the hoop. And he has his own answer, but it does not go in. Donald gets the rebound. Blocked by AK. Epps picks it up. And now it's the Rattlers fighting for the ball. Somehow, some way, the, the Mules got the ball. But I believe it's going to be a foul. It's, it is an offensive foul on the Mules. So to recap what happened there, AK went up for the block shot. I believe he might have gotten a piece of Donald. Because then Donald stood, Ryan Donald stood there in the corner with his, uh, looked like he was tending to his eye. That, mind you, would have been the fifth foul on AK. But instead, the possession continued. Epps shoots up a shot, misses. It ricochets off right where Donald is standing. Donald has his back to the ball because he was injured. And instead of getting the, uh, the loose ball, the Mules pick up a foul. And they will be granted an injury substitution. It looks like Donald goes to the bench. In comes John Gillum. And we said it was a foul. It, well, it was a foul. It was, a, it was the fifth foul. My mistake was the fifth foul on Donald. Okay, so so a lot going on there. I lost my own track of, of action. I was just watching yeah. Donald to see if he was okay. I wasn't even thinking of the foul. So he was the one that picked up the foul in that process as we caught off, off guard with the ball in his territory. So he fouls out. That means Epps now with four fouls still left for the Mules, but that is three players fouled out for the Mules in this contest. With 35 seconds left, uh, Neither uh, team in the bonus, so the Rattlers get to inbound the ball. I was going to say earlier uh, when Christian made that open layup uh, that the Rattlers really need to find a smart shot just like they do here. I I'm not sure what their method is going to be to run the clock as much as they can. When there is 35.4 seconds left in overtime, 35 on the shot clock, so you got to think that Central Missouri will probably try to play good defense early, go for the steal, see if they can to get a, a, any sloppy play from the Rattlers. Maybe by the time it gets to around 25 or so, maybe maybe foul. But they don't have much time to waste as they are down 75-73. Similar situation as regulation ended. The Rattlers had a two-point lead. Fred Wilson went to the free throw line, was short on both shots. It gave the Mules a chance to tie. Robinson did on the end one, but then missed his own free throw. And that's why we are here in, in overtime. What a game being put on by your St. Mary Rattlers and the visiting Mules. Bryce Smith inbounds it to Marvin Witt, gets it down the baseline to Bauer. Bauer back to Witt. Witt will bring it up court a little bit. You're seeing the uh, patience from the Mules and how late they were to foul, but eventually they do. And that was number 12, TJ White picking up his third. So that'll send Marvin Witt to the line with 27 seconds left. You just see the emotion of Marvin. He, he gets quite upset when he gets fouled. He's very into this game, a key component, 19 points. The season high before this game was 13. Been a major asset tonight. I'm not sure he's ever been on the bench, Chad. I think you're right. I, I don't recall a time where he's not been on the floor either. So he's played, if that's correct, he's played about 44 minutes. And with a depleted bench, we said that early in the game that we might see him a lot tonight. I'm counting, you know, fingers and toes here as I look at the Mules bench. Five guys in uniform dressed out on the bench. We know three have fouled out, so if my math's right, both teams down to their final seven players available for the evening. Wit good on his free throw, so seven a lucky number or unlucky, I guess, for both teams, but three now the magical number for St. Mary's. 76-73 your score. He'll try to push it to two possessions. And with 21 points now as he makes two huge free throws. And what a player we are seeing develop now for St. Mary's. He hasn't found his way to the bench tonight. We may not see him find his way back to the bench this year. Epps drives the basket with ease. AK not about to pick up his fifth foul. So that does cut the score to 77-75 with just under 20 seconds. Robin, we're seeing a player develop here in Marvin Witt. We talked earlier about him telling Kayleen Zelzenak for RattlerAthletics.com during the, the uh, Las Vegas Classic that he had um, never really played on the bench before and he was trying to get used to his, his newfound role 
and he might be showing that he belongs in the starting lineup tonight. As Marvin Witt, just magical tonight for the St. Mary's Rattlers. 21 points, only one foul. So in this foul fest for these two teams, only one foul. And again, who is Marvin Witt? Well, you should read Joe Rodriguez's column, The Cup of Joe, Starving for Some Marvin, on RattlerAthletics.com. Takes you uh, into the life of Marvin Witt who comes originally from Birmingham, Alabama. So the Rattlers probably trying to get the ball back to Witt. It's to Bauer right now. The Mules will try to foul. Well, they get the ball back to Witt. Witt crosses court, and he is fouled by Brooms with 14 seconds left. So it's the guy who you want to see at the line from St. Mary's perspective, probably not the guy you want to see from the Mules' perspective. Surprised they were not able to foul either Bauer or someone else a little earlier there. Although I don't know you want to see Bauer at the line either from the Mules' standpoint. But Witt now an opportunity to get 23 on the night. He calmly sinks the first. So the Rattlers back up by three. Ten fouls for both teams at this point here. In the second half, and he rattles in the second with 14 seconds remaining. What a big sequence for Witt, Robin. Rattlers so close to putting this victory in the bag. I feel like for the Rattler, all Rattler fans, thank goodness for Marvin Witt. His composure at the line gets four easy points. As if this is not a tight game. He's just so composed up there. He is quite emotional, very into this game. The Rattlers are so close, and it would be a sweet victory as, is, as it would be the Mules' first loss that the Rattlers are able to pull this out. And Witt flat out exhausted during this huddle right here. I don't know if you saw that in your camera as he was kind of leaning over Ended up putting his arm around redshirt freshman Josh Sanchez. Kind of just hit to, to get some support there as he has laid it all out on the line this evening for the Rattlers. We'll have his final numbers later in the evening on RattlerAthletics.com for you as we get the stats updated. The Mules now bring it up court. Jordan Epps over to Bruins. Bruins to Wolf. Wolf passes up the shot. Bruins takes a deep three. Oh, my gosh, he makes it. Bruins for, from three-point distance. And it cuts the game to one. Timeout on the floor from St. Mary's. So just when you think you've buried the Mules, they return. 5.3 seconds, Robin. Bruins wow. with a clutch shot from about four or five feet from behind the arc. He was shooting from the snake there. Rattlers, nice timeout, very smart timeout from, from Bryce Smith. Unable to find the open man. You do not want to turn it over in this situation. Rattlers just basically need to inbound the ball and hold on to it for dear life until that final buzzer rings. And imagine all of our Rattler fans who uh, stuffed themselves with, with turkey and stuffing probably suffering from some heartburn right about yes. now. A day after Thanksgiving is the Rattlers trying to hold on for dear life. Only five seconds left. Cl the clock, their ally at this point, you know, that'll be a quick foul from the Mules. It's Bryce Smith inbounding it. He gets it to Witt, who turns up the court, dribbles behind his back, and then is fouled as he loses the ball. So two things there. Fortunate that he got fouled as he put the move and sliced between defenders. Also fortunate that he was able to drain about two and a half seconds off the clock. So two more huge free throws from Witt. And you're getting to that point now where it's probably gonna be a desperation three to end this game. So Witt with the first shot, good. Five clutch. I mean, how, how many clutch shots can you have in this game? All of his three throws have just been that. I don't know which one was more clutch. You know, considering every every free throw was important. He gets a six straight, six straight rebound here, or free throw. And Preston Boone shoots it up. No good. The Rattlers win. Boone's shot too hard off the top of the glass. Somehow, some way, the Rattlers withstand the comeback from Central Missouri to hold on to win 81-78 in a thrilling nightcap of the first day of the St. Mary's Thanksgiving Classic. Marvin Witt, just amazing tonight. A game high, 25 points. Sensational for St. Mary's. We cannot say enough about the former bench player. Again, we say former. I'm not sure you'll see that guy back on the bench anytime soon. And our Rowdy Rattlers hugging 
<laughs> Marvin Witt as he came over to high five them after this big win. These guys quite excited. Ryan Thomas hugging as well. Huge, huge win for St. Mary's. Improves to five and one on the season. Their meals drop to five and one. And what a win for St. Mary's. A lot to be thankful for this evening. Robin, your final lasting thoughts on this one. Uh, just wow, Chad, wow. There's a lot of times, I don't know how more clutch you can be. A lot of big games tonight. Fred Wilson, EPAK, everyone contributed in their own way. And just wow, that's all I have to say. And we'll bring it wasn't the wow. An easy win. No, nothing easy about this one again. One rattler after another fouling out. Lost count at some point there. The Mules having three players foul out as well, but we saw we saw Benny, we saw Matthews, and we saw well both of them were unavailable tonight. We saw Bolton foul out, we saw Ryan Thomas foul out, we saw Joe Monroe foul out, we saw Justin Alexander foul out, we saw Ify AK play the entire overtime possession with four fouls. And lost in the shuffle of all of that, how big was that by him to be able to play those five minutes of overtime and not pick up the final foul? Clutch, clutch play. Robin, you said it. Wow. Bringing the wow tonight. The Rattlers winning this first game, 81-78. to Thank you for watching this production of the Rattler Network. For all of our friends, Kayleen Zelznak, David Tovar, Brian McGluion, and I hope I'm saying that somewhat right. I'm terrible at saying names, but I can spell it. And Joe Rodriguez. For Robin Johnson, this has been Chad Peters bringing you this St. Mary's basketball win here on the Rattler Network.